microcircuit design. It comes out the door, they have some model for how it should work, everything's fine, then it breaks. They don't know why it broke. And then somebody starts a project to go find and develop a tool to figure out why it broke. And so what happens is the failure analysis tools used in reverse engineering have a lag on technology of about three to six months. It's about where it is. And that's about how long it takes for somebody to recognize something's wrong, develop the tool to find it and fix it and understand it. Uh, and at this point, there's few constraints in quantity or knowledge of adversaries. And so the, the message you should take away, capabilities are completely uncertain. You don't know from one adversary to the next exactly what their capability is. They're highly variable over time, tend to always be increasing, uh, and they're continuously being refreshed. They always have something new, and you're not going to know about it. The good thing about exploiters is that they are flesh and blood at some point, even if they're botnets. At some point, they're being controlled by a person somewhere. And that's the thing you have to take advantage of. Uh, this, by the way, is not my list of behaviors. I started it. But then I worked with the National Security Agency, with Sandia National Labs, with a lot of uh, foreign material exploiters and said, this is what I, how I think you behave. And they'd say, no, I don't do that, or yes, I do do this. Okay, I admit to that. And so this list has actually been scrubbed with the country's best reverse engineers. So it's not just my feel of how they behave. Uh, they definitely prefer the path of least resistance, just like everybody. If it's easy, they get done, they go home, great. Uh, they tend to be extremely methodical. And if there was a trajectory that worked before, essentially an attack path that worked before, they'll always use the same one again. Just like us. You know, something works, you do it, right? Um, limited quantities doesn't apply as much in your world, unfortunately, as people can continuously attack you. But in some cases, it does. Uh, limited quantities or opportunities can exacerbate already cautious behavior. So. Uh, what we have seen in this case is that where we have presented them with protected systems and then when they see a system that isn't protected but has kind of characteristics that looks like it might have been, they act as if it is protected. So they approach it just as cautiously. So this is where you get into misdirection and you can really make use of kind of, of this particular behavior. Uh, new investigations are always tainted by past experiences. If they've seen something before, they believe it's going to be the same this time. Um, you can use this to your advantage in that you might still fall to a certain attack, but you might fall in a little bit of a different way and use that to your advantage. Um, there's always a higher priority task, always. Uh, really skilled reverse engineers, either whether they operate on a network or whether they operate on a missile, are highly prized individuals. There are very, very few of them. They tend to be backed up by big teams of people, but generally without the people who are truly skilled at this kind of capability. Even within the US, they're, they're, it's a couple handfuls. It, it's about that many. Um, and so they're always something more important. There's always general so-and-so who says, this is the most important thing. You've got to figure this one out for me. And that exists countries all over the world. Um, Repeated attempts without success can be demoralizing. Definitely true. Uh, people hate kind of banging their head against a wall only to get a, a bruise on their head. So, um, again, use it to your advantage. Communication is always challenging. This is uh, among disciplines means so getting software and hardware people to talk to one another. It's really tough. You can stick them in a room together. That's not talking together. So if you deploy a protection mechanism that forces communication between a hardware engineer and a software engineer, your system will be much stronger. If you take that up a layer to a network engineer as well, well you know, you, you kind of really thrown them into a loop. At the same time, for the attacker to get those big multidisciplinary teams onto a single task for a long period of time, extremely tough. They have other things to do. They'll concentrate on a problem for a little while, and a little while depends on what the particular system is. Could be a week, could be years. But eventually they'll move on to another thing. We, we see that when we design systems today. Generally, when we design systems today, you get all the talent up front, and slowly as the system matures, the talent kind of moves away and on to other things.
The last three are the most important because they apply to misdirection. And as I said, this is your best technique you have in the back. Um, it's important to understand that satisfaction occurs and expectations are met. Um, use that to your advantage. Caution occurs when something's a little bit odd. A good example of this may be, uh, let's say somebody's exploiting cell phones. And as part of this process, they remove uh, the microprocessor on the cell phone and they, they uh, instrument the die on a separate test stand. And they see a particular pad pattern to that, to that chip. Every single time they pull it off, there's a pad pattern. They put it to the side. They put it on their test stand. And then one time they pull off the microprocessor on the phone, the pad pattern's different you're going to draw a lot of attention when that happens. It might be for completely innocuous reasons, in case the one I'm thinking of it was. Um, really slowed them down as an exploiter, good thing, but it drew a lot of attention, which if you're purposely doing that, could be very bad. And, and that really comes to the challenge when deception is apparent. If it appears that you're trying to fool an exploiter, all of a sudden, the software, the hardware, the network person, all those people who weren't willing to talk to each other before or come out of their little uh, rooms where they were playing with their own toys, all of a sudden everybody comes into the same room. Everybody's focus is now on that one problem because everybody is excited. And they'll stay all night, all day, row after row until they, they figure that challenge out. And that's the worst position you want to be in. And that's why I say misdirection is your most powerful but also your most dangerous technique. Um, and so, of these, these behaviors were true when I started giving this pitch seven years ago. They're true today. They're going to be true 40 years from now and 100 years from now. So, if you've got to develop a protection system, protect against the human at the end of this thing, as opposed to what their capabilities are. Um, my last note, which uh, is a little bit different. I, I am from a company. I am from Raytheon, as you saw in my email address and so I figured if I was addressing folks at a university I would at least say what we were looking for and try to do a little recruiting I guess while I'm here. Um, enthusiasm and initiative. Uh, there are a lot of people that have enthusiasm. There are a lot of people that have initiative. Having enthusiasm and initiative is a rare uh, individual indeed. So I, I encourage you to find something you like to do that gives you that enthusiasm and that initiative and, and you'll be very successful. No matter what it is, it really doesn't matter what somebody tells you the market needs. If you have enthusiasm and initiative for something, you'll always be successful. Uh, leadership skills are in great need uh, throughout industry everywhere. Um, the ability for uh, people to take up tasks and perform them um, on their own or develop t teams to go solve problems with little uh, assistance is a, is a large need. Um, and for the talk today, the people who are going to understand these gaps between node operation and network. Because as an exploiter, I can tell you, if I get a node protection engineer or a, a operation protection engineer, a network protection engineer, and they all work independently, well, I'm going to exploit where they touch. That's exactly where I'm going to go because what they're going to do, and they do, uh, I give you lots of examples of this, is they're going to assume the other guy did it. They're, if some hole needed to be closed, well, and this happens today with actually information assurances that ride, information assurance systems that ride on trusted hardware. In almost every case, the information assurance engineer believes that the hardware person took care of something. And the hardware engineer always believes that, oh, that must have been taken care of in the OS. It won't allow that to happen. Um, and so people who can truly span these spaces, even if it means you give up a little depth in any particular area, but you can walk between them comfortably, um, is, is also a very rare individual within our space. So that was it. Thank you. So, questions? Sir? Uh, I want to a little bit disagree with the adversary always wins. Um, and uh, the fact is that information is perishable. Um, you know, for example, software uh, game, game developers would be quite happy.